sweat in some sort of machine grease. Damn, this name smells like motor oil. An ass. This one has yet to make eye contact, and this one is making too much eye contact. What the hell? Oh, nah. Hi guys, I'm Degenerate and welcome to Boyfriend to Death. The reason why I'm playing this game is because I recently saw a comment in my last video asking who the guy in the DLC is, right? Someone did answer, but I thought I could I would make a video anyways. Character in the DLC is Ren, definitely. His first appearance was basically was in Boyfriend to Death. We're gonna start a new game. This is our room, I guess. Just a disclaimer though, I'm not doing every ending for Strayed. If anyone is interested, then, I mean, just say it in the comments. I, I would, I'll do it. I mean, I like playing this game. I enjoy playing this game. I got so drunk last night, I almost forgot my name. What was it again? Now, I know I put my name last time. Uh, hopefully, let's see if it works, actually. It doesn't work. Okay. So, we're... When I played this before, I didn't want to use my name, so I just wrote YN, since I feel like it's appropriate in this situation. So yes, YN, my name is YN. Right, my name is YN. It's really hard to adjust to this college since I had to leave my hometown to come here. I've been pretty lonely. I got up and looked around. I picked up some flyers on the side table. There's some cool looking places to hang out here. Maybe I should go to one of these places tonight. Or, you know, there's also the option of just staying the fuck home. That's also something we could do. Now, depending on who, which, which place you go to, obviously you get the one of the three guys in the, the beginning. Um, for the guy that we're doing, we have to go to the Brain Mule. I think, I think I remember... If I sat here long enough and didn't decide, I think I stayed home. I guess it's not this game. Let's just continue. This bar seems nice, doesn't it? I just threw in whatever I had that was clean and headed out. And we just click right into place. It was a small pub, but lively. It had a real charm to it, but I wasn't quite feeling the relaxed vibe yet. I let out a small sound as someone bumped into me. Sorry. I quickly moved to the corner. I took a seat in the corner and tried to make myself seem smaller. Why the fuck would you go out then? This is why the name is YN and not my name. Because I separate myself from whoever this is. The jostling and laughing of the other patrons was starting to make me feel out of place. Hey there. The biggest douche of the universe. <laughs> I'm not even that voice because he's actually German. He's half German, half Canadian. Someone was speaking to me. Yeah, when you go outside, people speak to you. He had a bright, friendly smile and a fairly thick accent. I can't do a German accent, so I'm not going to. He placed a beer in front of me. You look down. This one's on me. I looked at the beer in front of me and then at the man. Was it that obvious that I was depressed? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, thanks a lot. I tried to say as cheerfully as I can. He slid into the seat in front of mine. So, what's your name? <laughs> My name is YN, nice to meet you. Hey now, no need to be so formal. Name Strayed. Now, as you can see, there's a tiny little heart here. That's, that's a big part of this game. Well, the first two, I guess. He was so cheerful. It was infectious. Was it? So what's on your mind, buddy? I'm not joking. Oh. I've been going to school. It's been super busy. Most of my friends don't have time to come out anymore. Sounds like a drag. You haven't seen your friends in a while now? I haven't seen them in a while, but f it, I don't need them to have fun. 
You will need them when you're getting chased by a maniac with a green shirt. I see them once in a while, but with finals, not as often. Not in a while. I've been trying to meet new people. Don't ever tell that to a person wearing a green shirt. Are you serious? I see them once in a while, but with finals, not as often. Schedule conflicts? That's a shame. He talks so normal. That's what's so insane about people. I can't trust nobody. This, this game has taught me that. It's no surprise you're feeling a bit down. No, I'm starting to feel a bit better. Hey, YN, that's what's coming to a bar is for, right? Yeah, not sitting in the f***ing corner. I look down at my mostly empty beer. You drink pretty quick. I didn't even notice. Hey, you want to get out of here? <laughs> We're flirting now with a deranged psycho. Strade's eyes moved over my body for a moment, then back to my face. He really sized me. Interesting. All right, let's go. And then we just click right into place. Strade bought me to an expensive looking car. Do you have your own car? I shook my head. No, I walk mostly. Got the signature on this one. That's how you know they drew it. Strade smiled as he opened the door for me. I took a seat in his car and looked at the door. There was no handle. Um... <laughs> why doesn't your car have a handle? Is there something wrong? Why isn't there a handle in your car door? Shouldn't every car have a handle? I had a tinge of panic in my voice. Strade just smiled at me and reached over, touching my head. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. I didn't answer my question. I started to panic and reach for the door again. The door with no handle. Strade's arm reeled back and bashed my head against the side of the car door. The one without a handle. <laughs> Everything started to go black as I felt Strade's hand on my chin. Don't make so much noise when I'm driving. Save it for when we get to my place. Okay. I woke up groggy. What happened? It was dark. I started to breathe hard as I felt ropes around my arms. I couldn't move. I began to panic. Um, yell for help, yell for strayed, stay quiet. Now usually when it's dark and you can't hear anything, there's no one around to help you. And even then if you yell, we gotta deal with that guy. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna stay quiet. I stayed silent and tried to understand my surroundings. First smart thing you've done today. It looked like I was in sort of garage or basement. There were tools everywhere and I smelled something coppery. Blood? My thoughts were interrupted by some slow thumping sound and set of stairs behind me. Oh, you're finally awake! How you feeling, YN? My guy, stay quiet. My wrists hurt. What the f is going on? Where am I? I'm guessing he tied us up. Did I tie you too tight? He leaned forward and grinned. I can't help it. You look nice with some rope burn. All right. I shifted on the floor uncomfortably. You abducted me. Let me go. I think there's been some kind of misunderstanding. Please don't hurt me. I think there's been some kind of misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? <laughs> no, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> of course you do. This place looks disgusting. Clean it. Oh, I forgot. Before we get started. Want something to eat? Drink? Get started. With what? I couldn't think too hard on it before I felt my stomach churn. I hadn't eaten since lunch before I went to the bar. Who knows how long it's been since then. Bro. You gonna take refreshments from this hooligan? I could use something to eat. I'm thirsty. Shake head. Now, the floor looks disgusting. The accent colors are gross. He's got like some sort of liquid coming out from on, on a pipes. It it just didn't look like he got an A grade restaurant over here. So I'm not taking food from this. 
Not the. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I'm here to get started too. <laughs> Straight pulled out a large hunting knife. Fear came flooding back as I squirmed nervously. What are you doing? Your clothes in the way. Your clothing's in the way. I'm just gonna leave it away. He shoved the knife under my sleeves and began to tear them apart. What? Wait, stop! I'll do anything you want. We're just gonna ask him to stop. We're not willing to do anything crazy yet. He completely ignored me. He moved very quickly with... and with a lot of force. I jerked and gasped as the blade grazed my skin a few times. In a few moments, my tattered clothing was torn from me and I was left in my underwear. Yikes. The cement floor was cold. I began to shiver. It cannot be that cold. <laughs> Come on now. He leaned back and stared at me. I felt a flush creep up from my neck. You blushing? Eee, calm down. It's not even that serious. You've never seen a woman before? I thought you knew what you were doing. You're so... Yeah, that's him. He paused, seeming to search for a word. Unbroken. Mmm, good word. What the hell was this guy talking about? I wanna... I'm gonna refrain from communicating with you. I decided to keep my curiosity to myself. I don't have very long to think about it anyway. I apologize, I have three animals in the house. Three. And my mom and my sister are playing um, some game and they're really loud. So you're gonna hear, you probably might hear something in the back or dog barking or cat meowing for attention or something. I don't know, it's, it's hectic in this house, it's hectic. He crouched down to my level and ran a rough thumb over my thigh. I tried to move my leg. He gripped it tight and lowered the knife to my skin. I tensed up as soon as the cold blade touched my skin. He left it there for a short moment as a tiny whimper escaped my lips. White hot pain searing up my leg as he dragged the blade slowly through my skin. Scream. I immediately let out a shrill scream. As I finally gasped in a breath, I realized that Strait was looking at me excitedly. He was really enjoying this. I could feel warm tears on my face. I glanced up at Strait. He was breathing harder. I saw him eye my legs again. Uh oh, not the legs. Stop. No more. He raked the knife roughly through my skin again. My protest became a wordless cry. I choked back a sob as he slashed again. He took a deep breath and pushed his fingers through his hair. Disgusting, mucky hair. Ugh, I'm getting too excited. I stared at him in terror, trying to stop shaking and crying. He whipped his knife... Oh. oh. He wiped his knife off his pants. Oh no, look how much you're bleeding. I bet you like that, don't you? He didn't look very upset. The pain was making me feel foggy. I looked up at him, bleary-eyed, trying to focus. Hmm, you're not gonna last like that. He leaned in and smiled at me. Would you like me to stitch those up for you? Um... Ask him nicely, nod reluctantly, or refuse. We're just gonna nod, since we don't wanna- we don't wanna make him like us too much. I didn't want him to touch me anymore. But he was right, I was bleeding a lot. If I wanted to live, I need him to help me. I glanced up for a moment and gave a sharp nod. Great. He walked to some cupboards on the other side of the room and retrieved a small medical kit. He sat in front of me and opened it up. <laughs> he hummed as he pulled out a small curved needle and thread. The cheerful smile that made me feel so relaxed back at the bar was starting to make me feel sick. He was acting real normal earlier. It was almost scary. He poked his finger once with needle, then pressed it to my skin. This is probably gonna hurt. You think? It's a sharp needle. I'm not dumb. 
He barely finished his sentence before pressing the needle through my skin. Then what was the point in starting the sentence? I gasped and shook, squeezing my eyes shut. I tried to grip my teeth through the pain. He moved very quickly and surely, as if he'd done it a million times before. He moved very quickly and surely, as if he'd done it a million times before. Almost. He tugged the suitors on the last wound, making me gasp. Done. I sighed in relief. Ah. He held up a bottle and small cloth. I almost forgot. Alcohol. This dude, no. Just a second. He splashed the liquid over my fresh cut sloppily. I hissed in a sharp breath through my teeth. It burned. There we go. All better? I was trying to catch my breath. I couldn't trust myself to answer him without starting to cry. He didn't seem to care about my answer anyway. So why did you f***ing ask? He was breathing evenly and straightening his shirt. I'll take that as a yes. You didn't want an answer, so stop. He bent down again to touch my face. I've decided that I'll be good. Ooh, he's speaking German. Don't know what that says though. Sorry. I just stared up at him trying to make sense of what he said. It was obviously of a different language. Come on now. He gave me two light pats on the cheek. Get some rest, okay, YN? He barely did anything. <laughs> he straightened up and stretched cheerfully, then walked towards the stairs. He's going to leave me here? Hey, yeah. He thumped up the stairs and I called after him desperately. Wait, don't just leave. I jerked as I heard the door slam. He did. He just left me down here. I looked down at my legs, covered in red, stitched up wounds. It still hurts like crazy. I need to keep it together. I should just try to get some rest. I woke up in a cold sweat. The first things I became aware of were pain and the cold basement floor underneath me. I must have passed out. The floor should have gotten at least a little warm under you. I mean, if you've been sitting there for a while, it should you start getting used to it. I squinted at the darkness around me. Still in this hellhole basement. Where else would you be? I tugged against the ropes behind me. My wrists slid a bit. I tugged harder. It came out. I rubbed my sore wrists gingerly. My heart was pounding. Okay, I need to think about this. I can move around. What should I do? <laughs> Get more rest. Search for food or water. Search for a weapon. Try to escape. Now if you're out, why would you lay the fuck back down and just be like, let me get in a better position to sleep on the cold floor? Think. That should never be an option. But the only reason why it is an option is because ways to regain your sanity is by sleeping. So this guy he seems to have quite the handful of tools, so we're going to search for a weapon. I can't just sit around. I need to fight back. I stood up slowly, my entire body aching. Ow. The basement was full of potential weapons. Tools everywhere. I looked at several saws, an axe, a sledgehammer. Wait. How am I going to attack him? I imagined a few scenarios. They were risky at best. I decided that my best option would be to pretend I was tied up as he left me. He'll get nice and close, and then I'll... I need something small. I searched around countertops and drawers. Ah, one drawer was full of knives. Perfect. I picked out a small, a small. Bruh. I picked out a medium-sized knife. Suddenly, I heard some movement upstairs. Shit. I scrambled back to my spot at the base of the pole in the middle of the basement. Damn, bars. I sat on top of the knife and slipped my wrist back into the loosened ropes. I listened for a while but didn't hear anything else. My head began to drop as soon as I slipped into a restless sleep. Damn. I woke up abruptly as someone kicked my leg. 
Bro, I was sleeping. Now this in the corner here, the knife, is gonna glow whenever we get a chance to cut the fucker up. So, I came to my senses and remembered where I was. Because apparently when we sleep, we forget. Still sleeping, YN? Aren't you looking chipper? You're all fresh and ready for a new day. Bro. I groaned and pulled at the ropes. I stopped as I felt how loose they were. Right, the knife. And apparently we forgot the knife too. I looked up at my captor. I need to strike at the right time. So, how about something to eat? He bent down and waved at something in front of me. It was some kind of energy bar. Ew. Them shit's probably nasty. So, I'm not taking it- Again, I'm not taking it. I bit my lip and stared at the bar. I was hungry, but I didn't want anything from him. No? I looked down. I wouldn't give in. So yourself. He unwrapped the bar and took a large bite. You think that's threatening? Mmm. You know. He waved the bar. I feel like we're getting- We're really getting to know each other. When's my birthday? No sound coming from your mouth? Oh. Okay. He took another bite. Mm. I know it hasn't been long. But this sort of experience, it speeds things up. It speeds what up? You haven't asked me what my favorite color is. Like, you know nothing. So stop. He kept chewing and leaned closer to me. It's the adrenaline. You're excited. I'm excited. Who said I was excited? Oh, as you look, there we go. It's glowing now. This would have been the time to strike, but we're not doing it now. He's eating. I'm at least going to be respectful enough to let him eat. I would never take away someone's right to eat something. He leaned even closer. I could smell him sweat in some sort of machine grease. Damn, this thing smells like motor oil. An ass. We're sharing something very personal. No, I actually did like this guy for a while when I first played the game, so I'm just, I'm literally just flaming him right now. He is attractive in some way. He's laughing like his shit don't stink. You look a little scared. I try my best to glare at him instead. Ah! Ah! I can tell how you're feeling. Can you? He looked me up and down while picking his teeth. Alright. That energy bar couldn't have been that good. You're all tied up on the floor. Some guy's basement. And who knows what I'll do to you. Helpless. Right? Are you monologuing? I must have just been staring at him. I couldn't think of anything to say. I'll give you some control. What happens is completely up to you. Oh great, let me go. I saw him turn around and gather a few items from a nearby table. Here's your choice, YN. What'll it be? Drill or hammer? This dude. We're gonna pick the drill. I raised a shaky hand and pointed to the drill. Oh, -ho, the drill. Really? Good choice. I was kind of hoping you'd pick it. He likes the drill. That's that's the one thing I remember about him is that he likes drills. He walked up to the counter to plug in the drill. I gulped and pressed my knees together. You gotta plug it in? Don't most drills now just turn on? There's no wire. You know what? Never mind. He returned with the drill. He bent close to me and pressed the trigger, letting it whir in the air. I squirmed, my breath starting to get shallow. Don't. You picked it though, hon. Well, I picked it. <laughs> he lowered to my skin on top of my foot, teasing it. No, no, no. I tried to put my foot away, but he grabbed it with his other hand. Then he pressed the drill down, tearing through my through flesh. Yeah, we're gonna scream. Gotta gain that sanity back. You know? I screamed to the ceiling. 
As he pulled it out, I began to sob. Alright, it's not that serious. He shoved the drill back into the same hole in my, on my foot. I let out a hoarse scream as blood sprayed from the spinning drill bit. Ooh. Imagine how that looks though. I feel like there was no point in screaming because it just went back down. He moved the drill around sloppily as I twitched and screamed. The pain was blinding. Everything was so loud, the drill, my own cries, and behind it all, strayed chuckling. I thought I was going to pass out. He finally withdrew the drill. He was panting. You f asshole. He put down the drill and rubbed his thumb over my cheek. You're doing such a good job. It's crazy. It's f crazy. I looked down at my mangled foot and choked back another sob. He followed my gaze and ran his hand over the wound. I promise Ren is coming. I promise. It just takes a little while. I winced as he played with my blood. He moved closer to caress my inner thigh roughly. Oh! He smeared my own blood over my skin. Don't touch me, say nothing, moan. Now this is when that sanity comes in. This is the example here. If my sanity wasn't here, I wouldn't be able to say this. So since it is here, we're going to say it. What was that? Straight leaned forward and to grab my chin. He looked at my face excitedly. Interesting. He lowered his hand, trilling a line of blood down my chest, my stomach, between my legs. Do you like this? I started to pant. After all the pain, this touch, I didn't care anymore. Oh, oh. He reached around me and untied my wrist. He pushed me down on the ground beside the pole I had been tied to. He seemed to be moving more smoothly. Was he being less rough? I let out a shuddered sigh. He had one hand on my torn up thigh. He squeezed and I moaned again. What was happening? He growled in my ear before his lips touched my neck for a moment. Then he bit down hard. I arched my back and cried out. I was breathing hard. I might have fucked up. <laughs> Wait one second. No, I actually messed up. I wasn't supposed to pick that. <laughs> it would have led you somewhere way different. Death. So we're just gonna tell him not to touch. He's probably not gonna. <laughs> He's probably not gonna listen. So. No. I can do something else if you'd like. My eyes widened. That fuck knife. I didn't mean it. You should say what you mean then. You think you're so... He grabbed my thigh tightly. Then he stabbed into my flesh. We're gonna scream. No, yeah. Okay. Get that sanity back up. It should have went up way more. Like... I screamed as hard as I could. I have a good idea. He moved the knife and crudely carved around my leg. I leaned back and cried in agony. There. I raised my head to see what he was talking about. I wish I hadn't looked. He was holding a chunk of my thigh. A grammar. I looked down at the bleeding hole. Ah. We're not done. We? It sounds like you're the one doing most of the, you know, the carving. He grabbed my chin in his bloody hand and forced me to look back up at the piece of my flesh. Open your mouth. What? Do as he says, refuse. Our health is pretty low. We might as well. We love just eating our own flesh. My leg was bleeding and my head was spinning. I couldn't protest anymore. I'll just do what he says. I slowly opened my mouth. Good. He pushed the bloody piece. Typo. He pushed the bloody piece into my mouth. It was big. Hey yo. It filled my mouth. As expected, I could only taste blood. 
damn you don't taste no type of way I looked at him pleadingly swallow it oh I breathed hard for a moment with great effort I managed to swallow it I retched and coughed <laughs> wow you're a real trooper he slapped me hard on the back eliciting another cough but at that rate you're gonna bleed out now you're worried uh, what's what is with him i looked down again blood was pouring from my leg we're gonna die i don't feel my vision went dark my eyelids fluttered but i kept them closed i was in a lot of pain i don't want to move I heard footsteps from on the stairs. My blood ran cold. I listened harder. They were slow and very light. Uh-oh. Now, this is the point we're here, basically. Um, we have to stay quiet in order for him to approach us. He ain't even supposed to be down here. So, plus this is the most, this is what a normal person would have done, is would have, sat to listen not then the white person choice and been like who's there i know someone's out there like come on i decided to keep quiet and not move the footsteps approached from the stairs they were accompanied by quiet clicking on the cement floor clicking oh i got talons i suddenly heard something sniffing right next to my head was it a dog? I opened my eyes. You're alive? What were you about to do if I wasn't? Oh, oh no. I blinked a few times. Now notice he has f***ing glasses on. Watch what happens when we go to the next game. I blinked a few times. Uh oh. Let's talk to him for as long as possible, right? Now, we have the knife. There's also the option to, like, to nick him. He's got a couple already, but one more wouldn't hurt. So, we're not going to do it, though. We might. <laughs> Who are you? Please help me. Are those fox ears? There's always a choice to ask about his ears. Always. So, we're going to ask... Ah, these? I'm a... Well, I can't hide them, but he doesn't let me. I blinked again. Was I going crazy? This tiny guy looked like he might run off any second. Let's introduce ourselves then. Let's start a conversation. I tried to speak calmly and gently. My name is YN. Oh. Um... My name is Ren. Nice to meet you. I guess. I guess. I'm the best thing that happened to you all day. Come on now. He was starting to look a little less nervous. Ren, I'm badly hurt. I know. He didn't seem to want to look at me. Ren, please help me. I watched him pleadingly. I can't let you go. Let's- Damn! You little asshole, he's gonna kill me. I understand. I was ready to blow off on him, like. Uh, let's be nice. He looked like he pigeon toes, like. <laughs> that pose that anime girls do. They knees inward and they, they foot outward. Judging by all the scars covering this creature. Creature? I could guess why he wouldn't disobey straight. You're not allowed, right? That's right. He kept fidgeting. I, um... I could get you a glass of water. Dirty ass water? I'll take it. I guess anything would be helpful. I'm sure thirst was contributing to my pain. I'd really appreciate that, if it's not too much trouble. Okay. He's so cute in this one. He scampered off behind me where I heard a tap running and some shuffling. It, uh oh, see the option to stab him? <laughs> Here you go. Uh oh, 
You're tied up. I'm sorry. He kneeled close to me and held the cup of water to my lips. I drank it quickly. I guess I was really dehydrated. Thank you, Ren. Ah, it's okay. So adorable, oh my gosh. He looked down at my foot covered in dry blood. I should... I guess I could help you a little with that. I raised my head hopefully as he went to gather a small medkit. He also went back to the sink, came back and sat down next to me. Another opportunity to stab his ass. He was washed. Ugh. He washed my foot with a wet cloth. It was warm. I tried not to cry out as he dabbed at the torn hole in my foot. Sorry, I'll try to be more gentle. I tried to smile reassuringly at him. He sprayed a bit of antibiotic on the wound. Um, I can't give you a bandage, he noticed. Obviously. I dropped my head before nodding slowly at him. It's okay, Ren. You've helped me a lot. You're welcome. His tail switched happily. That's why we love dogs. You could just tell when they're happy. I better go. I'm not supposed to be down here. So why were you? He was ready to grub. That's what he was ready to do. I nodded at him. He left quietly. I looked down. Alone again. I'm all alone. <laughs> I honestly forgot what he does after. Oh! <laughs> so, um, after very kindly meeting Ren, he just sets us on fucking fire. Full on William Afton. Now, I said I wasn't going to, but I'll just, I'll show you all. What would happen if you stabbed him? Perfect. I got the little bastard nice and close. I reached underneath myself for the knife and carefully sawed at the ropes, binding my wrists. Not that they were loose. Um, are you okay? Oh yes, I feel, I'm feeling much better. I will be anyway. <laughs> I don't care how sweet he's being. This thing is was with strayed. Ren, come a little, come a bit closer. I need to tell you something and we need to be quiet. He leaned in. What is it? Now. <laughs> I lashed out with the knife. He made a strange sort of barking scream. Damn, I was feeling weaker than I thought. I only got him in the arm. S straight. He was crying out. Shit. This nigga. <laughs> yeah, up. Uh Shit, shit. Ren, shut up. He kept crying out. Then I heard loud stomping down the stairs. What the? Dread looked at Ren, then to me. His face contorted with rage. You, you touched my box. <laughs> I shrank down and dropped the knife. He reached without looking for an extra, for, whoa. He reached without looking for an ax hanging on the wall. Wait. Uh oh. He didn't waste any time. I barely had any time to register the axe plunging at my face. Yeah, so you die if you. It doesn't matter how much health you have. Alright. On to the next one. Alright. Now we are here. This is Boyfriend Death 2, where he plays a way bigger role. In the, he plays a way bigger role in this game. He has his own, you know, little route. All right, let's do this. So, in order to meet the present, well, not present, the two years later, Ren, he's twenty-one now. We would have to go to the Jackalope. I decided to head out to the pub. The atmosphere and people were quiet, but it almost felt like stepping into the past. Maybe just because there wasn't a single TV. Let's just relax. We don't have to drink. I wasn't in the mood to drink. I just sat by myself and watched a few patrons mill about. You just people watch, huh? Their quiet voices and the clinks of glasses on wood made me feel a little sleepy. I lost track of time and began to doze off a bit. Huh? I fell asleep? I looked around quickly, since we're just known for that. The bar was empty, or almost empty. 
There was one man left in the corner, hunched over a drink. How long was I asleep? Maybe he knows what time it is. I got up and approached the man. Hey, sorry to bug you, but do you know what time it is? Oh. Uh, it's almost closing time. It's 1.45. He seemed like he was preoccupied with something else. Um, <laughs> he's known for not making eye contact. Wow, it's really late. Haha, <laughs> yeah. He was starting to look really uncomfortable. See how he's still not making eye contact? But I mean, I don't blame him. I can barely do it. I'm still working on that. I was just waiting for my friend. I only wondered about, I only wondered about his friend for a moment. A much short, shorter guy came out from the bathroom, looking very cheerful. All right, Lawrence, let's. Oh, there's someone else here. I smiled awkwardly at the redhead. <laughs> See how he put his—he can put his ears away, but where are his human ears? Ah. You still can go you still can get caught, my guy. I thought I caught a flash of panic on his face before he spoke again. Well, my name is Ren. It's nice to meet you. Oh, fun fact I keep forgetting. When you play this game, like this one, well, and I guess the the DLC, and you name yourself either Strayed or Lawrence, he reacts a certain way. But I didn't name myself either, so... It's nice to meet you. He looked at me expectantly. Oh! My name is YN. It's nice to meet you too. If your name was straight, he would look at you a certain way. We all looked at each other for a moment. Okay. What was up with these two? Is everything okay, Ren? Everything's great. Hey, I know. I can get us around before it closes. Oh, I... He trotted off to the bartender before I could say anything. I, uh... This might be the first time he's ever made eye contact. <laughs> then Lawrence followed him. <laughs> I stared after them, confused about the whole situation. Ren must be older than he looks, since the bartender is serving him. I sat down at their table and he and kept watching. They were talking to each other, quickly and quietly. It almost looked like they were arguing. But then they both returned and smiled. They are so weird. Lauren set the drinks down in front of each of us. One more drink for the night. Right? Refuse any drink. Then there's our drink, Ren's drink, and Lauren's drink. We gotta take his. That's how this works. This, this drink is mine! I reached across the table and took the drink in front of Lauren's. I took a sip. It was rum and coke. A comforting drink. The only drink that we drank. <laughs> I relaxed a bit as I finished it. I looked across the table at my new companions. Let's not go that far. He's already trying to be like friends with these dudes. And they've... This one has yet to make eye contact. And this one is making too much eye contact. Lawrence didn't touch the other drink. Ren started to look more worried. It's really late. I think I should leave. Wait, you're leaving? Sorry. Ren ran out the door. Hey, wait. Then Lawrence ran after him. I stood there baffled. They are weird. Then I shook my head. Those two really are really none of my business. That's true. And I really should be heading home. And then we click right into place. I grabbed my coat and strolled out of the pub into the crisp night air. Lawrence and Ren were nowhere in sight. That's it. Well, that was weird. I started walking down the sidewalk and felt something tap my shoulder. I jumped, startled, and turned around. Hello? Ah, you startled me. I guess that was a startled sound I made. He seemed to be struggling with what I said. Ren's path split from mine. Am I supposed to care? What are you talking about? Didn't Ren just leave because it's so late? Ren was different. Relax, man. <laughs> you can always hang out with him later. 
I'm sure Ren just wanted to get home. I'm sorry? Like, I don't- what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, Ren just wanted- I'm sure Ren just wanted to get home. And I'm going home too. Dodge! You're not hitting me, not today. He took a swing at me. This dude? His fist connected with the bricks where my head used to be. Yeah, that's what you get. I started running down the street away from him. This guy is nuts. There's so many cars passing by, they should see this. People should be able to see this. I stumbled a bit as I tried to run. All the other- All the drinks I had earlier in the night were slowing my steps. All the drinks? We only had one drink! I kept moving. I could hear him behind me. I felt a pang of dizziness for, the, for a moment. There was an alley to the right. And let's go to the right! I veered into the alley and pressed my back against the wall. This is where you would touch the tail here, and that's how you get Ren's route. Why in? Come with me, I'll help you. I swayed on my feet. Ren? You've got... I don't feel... I know. I began to collapse as he tried to hold me up. It'll be okay. What in the holy... <laughs> There were so many cars going by, like, I don't get it with some people. No one saw me about to get duffed by an antisocial creep. Come on now. I woke up in a comfortable chair in a strange house. What happened? I tried to remember as someone familiar approached me. Oh, you're awake. Do you feel better now? You've been asleep for hours. I groaned and rubbed my head. Right, I went out and then these two guys... Where am I? What happened? Thank you for helping me. Let's keep this nice street going, shall we? Well, of course. It's no problem at all. Anyway, now that you're up, I bet you're feeling hungry. Why don't I make you something to eat? About your ears... <laughs> There's that choice again. I really should be leaving. Accept his offer. Accept, because I'm hungry. Let's, let's grub. Oh, uh, I suppose I could stay a bit longer. Thanks. Great. You're gonna love it. I have these really nice... Whoops. I'm rambling. You just started talking. I'll just be a bit. Sit tight. Okay. I shifted it in the seat. And hear a soft clinking. Ooh, this music. What the? Oh, what the fuck? There was a huge chain on the floor. From the wall to my ankle. I was about to say something when I noticed something heavy around my neck as well. I reached up. What? What is this? Some kind of collar? Or more like a neck-sized shackle? Bruh. You just said collar in a different, like, way, though. I realized moments after that I'd yelled loudly at the discovery. I heard the quiet sounds in the kitchen stop. How are you hearing quiet? Never mind. I stood up, gasping at the metal ring around my neck, not finding any way to open it. He returned to the living room leisurely. Leisurely? Not seeming too concerned about my distress. What's wrong, Wyan? What the hell is this thing on my neck? Let me go! Why am I chained to the wall? Buddy? Oh. There's no need to be worried, Wyan. I know it seems a little... different. But just trust me, okay? We'll be best friends before you know it. This nigga wants a friend. That's the- that's- that's his, um, his shtick in this one. He is just obsessed with having a friend. I gulped and reached up to touch the collar around my neck. All that? It's a little... hand-me-down. A gift for my new friend. Okay, friend. Uh, thank you? Are you insane? If you wanted my friend, why would you do this? That's, you know, the most radical. Or not radical. 
That's the most rational option. But uh, we're just gonna thank him since he's obviously off of his rocker. Off of his what? Knocker? He's definitely off of his knocker. I felt that being polite was probably the best option. Well, you're so welcome. He paused and chewed his lip. Although, it's been a pretty long time, and I'm not sure if it still works. Why would you... What? Works? Uh, what does it do? I had a feeling, but I wanted to be wrong. He could have did that somewhere else. Let's be honest, right? He dead could have done that somewhere else. I feel like it still would have shook or whatever. If he did it on a table before putting it on a person, I feel like if you still press the button while it not being on around a person's neck, it would still like vibrate. So why would he have to, why would he test it on me? This shit's still gonna work. Come on now. This gremlin. Wow. I gasped raggedly. I felt like I was being punched all over at once, but now it's completely gone. Looks like it still works fine, huh? A thousand things went through my head at once. He put some sort of electric collar on me. Where does someone even get something like that? What did he mean by training? Is he crazy enough to kill me? How can I get out of here? Those potatoes are probably done by now too. Potatoes? He turned- you know, he about to feed me potatoes? He turned and went back to the kitchen. I shrank back into the couch. I suppose I can take this time to figure out my situation. I shrank into the soft cushions. That chain certainly isn't breaking. You didn't try to break it, so why would it break? It just got- you got the force? Come on now. I heard the quiet sound of cooking starting again. In the kitchen. Oh, I can't read. The shackle on my ankle looked as indestructible as the collar on my neck. Very observant. It is made of steel. I heard the hiss of something in the, in a skillet. You are extremely observant. My eyes traveled down the chain to the wall. That's starting to smell really good. I shook my head. Concentrate. The wall. It's just a normal house wall. It's a fucking wall. Come on now. That got to be the weak point. I stared for a while, contemplating if I should just get up right now. I don't think that's a good idea. He'd hear me, and he still got that remote. Why in? I gasped and jumped in the chair. Oh, I didn't hear you. Because he's quiet. Remember in the last one, he has like the... Uh, them light footsteps. But he still, he got them talons on him though. I stammered and gave him a nervous smile. <laughs> yeah, I can be pretty quiet. <laughs> You're not funny. Anyway, dinner served. He held out a plate heaped in mashed potatoes and steak to me. Steak and potatoes? Come on now. I took it eyes wide. This looks really good. Well, looks don't mean much anyway. What matters is how it tastes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I forgot a fork. Bitch, do you eat with your hands? We gonna have to train you. Take this collar off, put it back on you. I'll be right back. Might as well thank him. We're not gonna eat, like, hot food with uh, our hands. You're so polite. I really hit the jackpot. What? He practically skipped to the kitchen. He's in a great mood at least. He came back quickly, beaming and holding out a fork. I took it quietly and looked down at my meal. It seemed awkward to eat in front of someone like this. But I was starving and it smelled amazing. Everything else is wrong. I might as well enjoy this. I took a bite. Well, I'm gonna guess it's good since we are starving. It's- it's really delicious. 
I tried not to sound surprised. Bro, I already read it, so. Though he seemed to relax just watching me dig in. I was so hungry that it was easy to temporarily forget everything else. We're really good at that. When we sleep, <laughs> right? When we pass out, we just forget. I cleaned my plate and finally looked up. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I wish he was this nice the whole time. That chain and collar could could go go. So so. To go go though. He took my plate and fork from me. I chewed my lip as he took them to the kitchen. This house is nice. I nestled into the comfy chair. And his cooking is so good. Maybe this isn't so bad. I considered pulling my knees up to my chest while I waited. I lifted my foot slightly, hearing the clink of, a, of the chain reminding me. Right. I looked up. Uh, we forgot, you see? We already forgot that there's a chain on our ankle. I looked up in time to see him returning. Alright. He quickly wiped his hands on his shirt. Maybe it's best that we just get you settled in. Give you some time to adjust. Like I'm a fucking dog. You're the one with the ears and the tail here. Come on now, let's switch places. Really quick, please? I just looked at him. What did he mean by settled in? <laughs> We're moving in, hun. <laughs> let's get our boxes and unpack. Look at the side of- Bombastic side eye. Yo. That face takes me away. I love you so much. To my surprise, he pulled out a small key and bent down to my shackle. Don't forget about your collar. I gulped, reaching up to touch it. I'm going to open this, but if you aren't good, I'll have to shock you. I nodded slowly. Look at your face. Oh, I want to- Squeeze your cheeks. As long as he takes that off, I'm in a better position. It clicked open and fell to the floor. You're so cute, but I have to. He let out an inhuman growl as he dodged me. No! <laughs> what else did, what did we think was gonna happen? I fell to the floor. Yeah, he like, did you like that? Oh, so we do it again. I thought one was enough. He panted softly. I laid motionless on the ground, letting out half a choked sob. That wasn't a good idea, YN. He stood over me. I was just trying to show you your bedroom. Are you going to come nicely now? You might as well put a ears and tail on me, because I'm a pet. I focused on the remote in his hand. Yes, yes, okay. Dang. Shit. Good. I'll get up. You're not gonna help me? I had to brace myself on the chair. It still hurt. My muscles were on fire. He held my arm gently and guided me down a short hallway to a door. He swung the door open. A simple bedroom. No bars or chains or anything. Well... It's just the house. I know it's kind of boring, but I didn't know what you'd like. You were going to remodel the room based on what I liked? Come on now. Let's be honest with ourselves. This room isn't even that bad, actually. That bed looks really good. All to myself, too? Shit. I'm having a field day in here. Once I get to know you better, we can spruce it up. My eyebrows furrowed. How long are you planning to keep me here? It's nice. Say nothing. We need a time frame, my guy. He stiffened at the question. Just get some rest. Uh-oh. We can talk more tomorrow. He slipped out the door and closed it behind him, leaving me in the room. I could hear him walking away, but from what I could tell, he didn't lock it or anything. I looked over to the bed, touching the metal ring around my neck. He has to sleep sometime. Maybe for now, I'll just bide my time. I went to the window first. There didn't even seem to be a way to open it. The glass looked too thick to smash with anything in the room. Outside, it's some rich-looking suburban neighborhood. Where the hell am I? 
Very different from where you live, huh? The window was facing some fancy backyards. It looked like the kind of place that had homeowner meetings, book clubs, and backyard barbecues. A whole Caucasian experience. I explored the bedrooms fully. It was just like a hotel room. <laughs> Nothing in any of the drawers. Clean looking, clean smelling. Now that I think about it, the living room sort of looked unused too. Or at least really new. What kind of person Fox lives in a house like this? I flopped on the bed, staring upward. I tried to go through theories in my head to make this make sense. The theories only grew more and more outlandish as I started to doze. We fell asleep again. That's like our favorite thing to do. At some point, I wouldn't be able to remember. I fell asleep. Oh, look at all that in all that sanity back. I shifted on the soft bed, waking up slowly. I began to wonder where I was. What? Oh my goodness. Then it all came flooding back. I flung myself up and off the bed. I looked to the window. It's morning. Ugh. I walked quietly to the bedroom door, straining to hear anything. It's completely silent. I tried the doorknob. The door opened easily. Oh. Stay in the bedroom, call for rent, or explore the house. This is the perfect opportunity to walk around and, you know, experience the outside. Well, I'm not just going to stay in here. I did just take a big fat nap, so. I tiptoed in the, into the living room where I was chained before. Still no sign of Ren. I looked around the room at my options. There's stairs to the second floor. Another door under those stairs. Then of course there's the kitchen. Maybe there's a weapon there. I looked towards the entranceway. Or I could just make a break for it. Yeah, with a collar on. Check the kitchen. Explore upstairs. Open the door under the stairs. Or leave the house. Now. Oi. We do have lots of options, but what we're going to do is we're going to go to the door under the stairs. I stared at the simple looking door. There was something weird about it. The handle was strange. I turned it and heard a couple clicks. It's heavy. As I swung the door open, I saw that the other side was thick and metal. What the hell? Oh, nah. Anyone want to go down there? Because I know I don't. I fumbled for a light switch and eventually a flickering light revealed stairs into the dark basement. Something about it was making me nervous. <laughs> like we've been here before? Uh, let's go down. We have to. <laughs> I have to know what's down there. This is so creepy. I stepped down the wood stairs creaking softly it smells musty and coppery i'm glad that that metal door like stops the smell from uh, exiting because oh my i felt along the wall looking for another light there there was our little seat last time very comfortable I stared at my surroundings. It's nothing like the rest of the house. It feels old and used and lived in. It's a house. There's stains. Oh, well, I guess because you said earlier that the house looked unused, but. A shiver crawled up my spine everywhere. I gulped and took an involuntary step back. The woodworking tools shone in a sinister way under the artificial basement light. All I could hear was the hum of a small fridge and a large freezer. My gaze locked on the deep freeze. More chains. I approached it. I was filled with an irrational need to open it. Then open it. <laughs> I placed my shaking hands on the lid and lifted it. It opened with a suctioned crack. <clears throat> I bet that was disgusting sounding. My eyes adjusted to the light. 
Oh, that sanity gone. Oh gosh. Look at this ugly mug. He is so dead. <laughs> he still got that same look on his face. When you die, you like your face freezes in whatever expression. If that's so, put a bag over my head, bro. I stumbled backward, falling to the floor. Let's get a good look. Why'd the music restart? <laughs> oh my. Look at the, the packages. It looks like... Oh. That is gross. The lid of the freezer fell with a bang. No, no, no. He's a murderer. I have to get out of here. I scrambled to my feet and ran up the stairs. I heard the door open and a loud thump. Ren? I looked around quickly. I should get back to the bedroom. I ran as quickly and quietly as I could back to the room he left me in. I closed the door silently, my heart thudding. I don't think he noticed anything. I let out a sigh of relief before pressing my ear to the door. More thumps. <laughs> Come on. Isn't this what you wanted? Who was he talking to? He was moving farther away. I strained to hear him. YN! I jumped. Are you in your room? Come out here. I have a surprise for you. E I cleared my throat, realizing my voice was choked. Yes. I came out of my room slowly. Did you have a nice rest? I hope he couldn't see me sweating. Um, uh, yeah. Great. Well, come on. I've got everything set up in the spare room. He motioned me over to a door that I had assumed was for a closet. Check it out. I cautiously looked inside the dark room. My eyes adjusted to the darkness. Uh-oh. What's up, guy who can't make eye contact? How, how was your day? Well. What? It was the other guy from the pub. You remember Lawrence? I do. Slightly. I just stared. Astound. Did. Astound did. Lawrence was going to be my new friend. So he was going to take my place if he didn't try to duff me, one. And two, if I didn't touch your tail. But then you came along. He grinned at the terrified man in the chair. Look at that gremlin. <laughs> it's weird how quickly things can change, isn't it? I guess. I gulped hard. And what a... Why is he here now? Ren flashed me a fanged smile. Then he reached for something behind himself. He revealed a knife. Before I could react in fear, he held it out to me. I want us to share something really special, Lyan. He couldn't be serious. I held the knife. You want me to hurt him? I heard Lawrence muffled whimpers as Ren looked me over. Hurt him. Make him bleed. Cry. Kill him. The knife quivered in my hand. I considered the people in the room and the collar on my neck. Oh my. Uh, he didn't do anything to deserve this. Well, his route would beg to differ. Please don't make me. Cut, Lawrence. Uh, considering what he does in his route, I am gonna cut him. <laughs> I don't have a choice. I stepped closer to Lawrence with the knife. I considered apologizing to him, but what would be the point? Go on. Ah, bop, 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 bop. Make it quick, do it slowly. Ooh. Let's, uh, let's go slow. I moved closer to Lawrence, watching as he began to panic more. I wasn't sure where to start. I looked at his arm and touched the blade to his skin. I've never done this to anyone before. Obviously. I pressed the knife down, sliding it, testing it. Testing it? It's a knife. 
His arm jerked against the rope and cut and zip ties as he groaned into his gag. Such a strong reaction even though it was so easy. I looked up to his face. He was breathing hard. Scared. I moved the knife over his skin again. He muffled more sounds. I could tell by the begging look in his eyes that he was trying to say... No, no, no. He wants so badly for this to stop. More than he's ever wanted anything. I flashed the knife in front of him. But there's nothing you can do about it, is there? His head jerked up and I realized I spoke aloud. The whole room was silent. Ren and Lawrence were frozen, anticipating what I'd do next. I'm the one in charge at this moment. But we we cut his leg, just in case it wasn't seen. I pressed the knife into Lawrence's thigh. He began to scream into the gag as I pressed it further into him, slowly. Seeing him unable to stop me, even though he was so desperate, he so desperately wanted to. I twisted the knife. It filled me with something that I'd never really felt before. Strangely, I was more aware of the collar on my neck as I did it. I've been helpless too. I pulled the knife out. He was shaking. I lifted his chin so he could look at me. This was important. I understand how you feel, Lawrence. I wiped the bloody knife on his shirt. You can't stop this. Terror flooded his face. And tears, apparently. Why did that feel so good to say? I pushed the knife into his belly faster. Yikes, 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 yikes. I could tell his screaming was becoming hoarser, even with the gag. He's so soft. I pulled the knife through his flesh and watched blood and other things that could that should stay in the human body fall out of him. His, health, his head fell to his chest. After a moment of time, I couldn't probably recount. I realized I was panting. I glanced over at Ren. I was surprised to see a hint of fear. You're scared. You're the one who wanted me to do this. I grinned at him. That wasn't so hard. I sheathed the knife in Lawrence's chest. Uh, yeah. I guess it wasn't. <laughs> you, you did great. Was he not expecting me to do it? I scoffed. I should clean up. He smiled at me warmly. You can just relax now. Sure. I turned and left him in the small dark room. The living room seemed brighter and more comfortable than before. I flopped on the couch leaning back. Something was telling me I should be more bothered by what just happened. I closed my eyes. But well, why bother freaking out now? I relaxed on the soft cushions and ended up dozing. Again? Ugh. I woke up with a deep feeling of dread. Then I realized where I was, and it doubled. Hey, YN. I couldn't get Lawrence's face out of my head. And by the looks of it, neither could Ren. There was a tense silence before Ren finally spoke. I thought it would be easy. I've never... I mean, not really. I looked at him questioningly. Questioningly. Killed someone. Not before Lawrence. What? What about that guy in the basement? Yeah. What? How did you... I went in the basement when you were gone. And I saw. Well, you know. He looked flustered and scared. I, I didn't kill him. He died. By himself. I remembered the man in the freezer. All that blood in his chest. He couldn't have done that to himself. Yeah. No, no sane person opens their own chest. How did he die? Ren visibly clammed up. He... He brought someone home. He sometimes... I waited patiently for him to continue. He sometimes hurt people. I looked at Ren's face and neck, suddenly wondering about those scars. Just the two? He messed up. They got a knife. 
and like we had the knife well they both ended up dead I tried to think it over for a moment it wasn't adding up I looked back at Ren but his chest he hurt people Ren looked uncomfortable if you say one wrong thing here he will kill your ass well he said that that's how you can really know someone I squinted at Ren you took advice from a crazy person a dude in a green shirt like really really know them so so yeah sometimes he hurt people sometimes he killed people I remembered the basement and the stains on the floor sounds like he was a psychopath his fur bristled no weak people die huh there it is strong people live that's how it works that's interesting you have two big burly men to take care of your work for you though he's back I came back So, mm, mm, mm. let's talk about it. Isn't he dead though? <laughs> right? Th that, that was a stupid mistake. It wasn't fair. You're, he's defending him. He took a few deep breaths, looking like he was trying to hold back tears. I guess I can understand why he would defend him though. He was the only one. He took care of me. And before? <laughs> Who hurt you before? It looks like he only hurt you. He couldn't hold back his tears anymore. That's not true. He... No one ever cared about me like that. He loved me. You're lying to yourself. Ren sniffed and slouched, shrinking down. And now that he's gone, I've never felt more empty. He started sobbing. Why... why did I... He didn't love you. What did you do? I'm sorry. It's okay now. Let's ask him what he did. I asked him cautiously. Quietly. Almost a whisper. I could tell he was unstable. Dangerous. And what did I say? Ren sniffed and lifted his head. I didn't do anything. I looked at him, confused. I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Yeah. Now this is actually one of the other endings in the other game. Like, if I would have... Like, when I was doing it, when I had the knife before... When he got close to me, and I, if I actually did slash him, I would have gotten him just like this on his neck, but he would have, in the time <laughs> before he dies, he takes my knife, gouges out my eye, and then we die. But he, this is how he shortly dies after. He doesn't live after that. He told me to help him. He even begged me. But I didn't do anything. Yep. I can only think of one of the things he did. Why didn't I help him? Because you're a sane person, right? Like, you're gonna save the person who gave, gave you hella scars? Come on now. You don't need him. What? You never needed him. Of course I did. I didn't have anything before him. My family hates me. Who's your family? I didn't have any friends. He was the only... Stop. What? You're alive now, right? Yeah, I guess. You guess? You've done that with and without him. You don't need him. And you don't need me. But... You've been through pain. But you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. So why not wait and find out? I... I don't want any more pain. I'm scared. That's okay. The future is scary, but it can be fun too. 
You're only gonna get one chance at this, friend. I tensed up as he raised the remote. Oh shit. But instead of a shock, I heard a quiet click. The collar popped open and fell to the floor like dead weight. Please, just go. Before I change my mind again. Again? I paused for a moment. Then I grabbed a pen and paper off the coffee table. I'm going to leave. But I want you to have my number. That's nice. I want to be your friend. For real. Call me and we can do something fun together. Uh oh. <laughs> and what would that be? Something we both like. Okay? He nodded silently. I can't know what the future holds either, but I'm willing to find out. We already know. Anyways, yeah, that was basically Ren's little backstory. Um, so yeah. I mean, if, again, if anyone is interested in seeing full playthroughs of, like, Strayed, Lawrence, and Ren, I mean, I'll gladly do it. It's it's not a big deal. I really like this game. It's, like, my favorite thing. So, I I'm a completionist, so I have basically everything. I have all the images, all the endings. So, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, we did it! You know what? I don't even feel like going out. I shut down the computer. All those places look like a bad time. <laughs> I got up and grabbed the ice cream from my freezer. Then I sat down with a spoon, a blanket, and turned on the TV. Time for some movies. Oh wow! You survived. You chilled at home and it was awesome.